Hey guys, it's Milma here with another Xcode tutorial. Now this is a second part of my reading and writing plist files series. So if you haven't seen the first one, go check it out here. Otherwise you'll be completely lost in this tutorial. So in the last tutorial, I taught you how to read the plist, how to write a plist, and I taught you how to kind of save where the plist is going to be. So the purpose of this tutorial is going to be teaching you how to find the plist, so find where this is saved on our computer, and then I'm going to be teaching you how to download this plist from a server so you can read it from a server instead of reading it from within the app. And this way we can, oops there's an extra semicolon there, um, and this way we can then have a remote server plist and populate our arrays or table views or dictionaries or integers or whatever from this remote uh, array a remote plist on our website or server and we don't need to worry about updating the app constantly through the app store so first we need to find out where this plist is so to do that we just log the file path so in my read plist i have logged where the file path um, we did that in the last tutorial so you should have that already have that there so if we run the iphone simulator just read the data. We don't need to write it again because it's saved, remember, to our iPhone. So read the data, and here it is. I have a, an extra thing added here. That's just because I was testing something, so forget about that. Um, but as you can see here, we have this is our file path. So I'm just going to go to that file path, which I have open already. So here is the file path here. This is our milmersdata.plist. So now if I were to open this, double click it will open up Xcode plist editor, like so. However, this doesn't really show us the code or what's going on inside this plist. So if we go back to Finder a second, and we can open this with text edit. Now, you can open it with text edit, but I'm going to open it with Coda, which is a free application for pretty much any editing language you can want. It won't do as much as Xcode does, but it's just an editor, basically. So I'm going to open it with Coda. However, if you open it with text edit, you'd see exactly the same thing, but without the colors. So if we have a look at this here, we can see we have our array and then we close our array. Then within this array, we have strings and these strings contain the words. So the words that you see. So that would be Milmers, Xcode and apps. That's what you saw when we logged it. To simply add another one, we just do string and then we're going to type in video and then forward slash string. Save it. So if we save and then we go back to our iPhone simulator, if we read the data again, we don't need to write it because remember we've saved it. If we just read it again, go back to our log, you can see video has been added. We didn't need to even close the application and relaunch. It's just been added straight away. We can also add all sorts of stuff if we go back to where, wherever it was, if we just find the screen here. Here you go. If we go back to the Xcode editor, we can add all sorts of stuff. So we can add numbers. So I can add um, 55. We can add uh, dictionary. So if I turn that into a dictionary here, and then in the dictionary, I'm going to add two things. One's going to be video one video 2 or 23, whatever. And then these are going to be a string value. It's going to be call vid like that. And then bad vid. Now all I need to do is save, read the data, go back. And as you can see, we have 55 and our new dictionary along with everything else we had here. So there you go. That's how you quickly just edit a plist. So if you were to have one on a server, all you need to do is change or add something to it like that. And then in the per in the app, the person would just need to click refresh or whatever, and it will automatically reload the data and add it to your app. Um, so that's the first part of today's tutorial. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, pretty simple so far. Now what I'm going to teach you to do is get this plist from a server. So instead of reading the plist from where the file path is, now we know where this file file is, we can remove it from the dictionary it's in. So if we take this out and then upload it to our server and delete it from the documents here, and then all we need to do to load it from that server 
is to instead here in the read plist file, instead of init with contents of file, we go init with contents of URL, then we give it the URL. So it's nsurl URL with string. And then I've already got one uploaded to my uh, website just to speed things up. So it's failcake.webs.com and then it's forward slash my website data.plist. Now this is just a random plist I made. So that's how you do it. So now if we uh, stop, well, we didn't actually need to stop. I forgot about that. We didn't actually need to stop at all, but it doesn't matter. And then if we read the data again, you can see here, if we look at our logs, we have a whole new array of datas. And here I have a dictionary with that, and I have an integer here. And these are just random things. You know, I don't actually have blue eyes, but you know, it's, well, yeah, just random dictionaries. But as you can see, that is downloaded from a URL. So all you need to do is edit this website data dot plist on your website and then re-download it into the app by a refresh button or something like that and you'll get your new data. So there you go guys, that's just a, a quick tutorial on how to download information from a server and also you know, find out where your plist is so you can do that in the first place. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Um, the next tutorial will be teaching you how to integrate plists with a UI table view. So you can find that here and how to integrate plists with a UI table view. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Hope that helped uh, a lot of you out in data management and stuff like that. So again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. Don't forget to click on some of the ads in my videos. I know it's a lot to ask, but you know, it just takes a, a second to follow me and just click an ad or, or click subscribe. So again, thanks for watching and see you in my next tutorial.